Shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm Officer Benayu with IUIC Tupelo, Mississippi. And to my right, Soldier J. Judah. And today we back with another topic. Today we're going to be talking about the Baptist Church. The Baptist Church and water baptism. All right. So uh, I want to get started because I came up in the Baptist Church and, hey, bro, you, used to get, you had to get dipped. You had to get dipped. I don't know why you had to get dipped because they don't never tell you. But but in the Baptist church, they believe in put, dipping you in water. So we're going to go into the scriptures today and kind of see where that came from and how what 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 are what are they doing about with this dipping in water and stuff and what does the dipping in water do for you? So uh, first, I want to get started. I'm I, I'm gonna go to, to uh, Wikipedia and. Uh, read about the Baptist church because in the South, I'm from Mississippi and in the South, most of us, a lot of us are came up in that Baptist church. So, uh, get, get that article, uh, the Baptist church, because in Mississippi, if you've noticed, you have the Baptist church, which is the Southern Baptist, which is the, is the white folk. And then you have the missionary Baptist, which is the black folk. So the most segregated day in Mississippi is Sunday, okay, which I thought God, God is, loves everybody, but why y'all so separate on Sunday if y'all got the same God? Don't make no sense. But anyway, let's read right there. Started, uh, now this is from Wikipedia about the Baptist, Baptist church. Read that. Baptist church. Mm -hmm. Baptists are a Christian religious group. Uh -huh. Many Baptists belong to the Protestant movement of Christianity. Read. They believe that a person can attain salvation through faith in God and Jesus Christ. Read. Baptists also believe in the sanctity of the Bible. Read. They well, they say they believe in the sanctity of the Bible, but they don't do nothing the Bible say. We're going to see. Read. They practice baptism, but believe that the person must be wholly immersed in water. So they practice baptism. So in the scriptures, John the Baptist was a man. So the so-called white man, cause whoever, who started the, uh, the uh, Baptist religion? It was John Smith. I think his name was John Smith. Y'all got a picture of him? The John Smith, we're gonna put this guy up on the screen. This is, this is the person that started the Baptist religion, a, a white man, his name is John Smith. So all you black folks in the South, that's in the Baptist church, this who started your religion right here, John Smith. So he came, he made up a lot of stuff that ain't in the Bible, and we're going to go over a couple of them today. All right, go back to the article. All right, so uh, so they believe that you should be wholly, wholly submerged in water. Okay, now skip on down in that article down there in the 1800s. Okay, yeah, right there. During the 1800s. During the 1800s, uh -huh. the Baptist church divided over the issue of slavery. Oh, so the Baptists had slaves. I wonder who the slaves were. You so-called blacks here in the South were the slaves. Okay, master had you in slavery. And guess what? If master was a Baptist, guess what you became? A Baptist. Okay. Read on. Many Baptists, especially in the South, mm -hmm. firmly believed that slavery was religiously permissible. You hear that? These are not these white folks, which is the, uh, the nation of Edom in the scriptures, believed that it was okay to enslave you. They believed that that was their God-given right for you to be a slave. Okay? But yet today, y'all, you know, that's your brothers and sisters. Read on. Other Baptists disagreed mm -hmm. and argued that slavery violated God's word mm -hmm. as printed in the Bible. Read. In 1845, mm -hmm. the Baptists split into pro and anti-slavery camps. And you know where that come when, where, where that, what came out of that? The Southern Baptists, which is the, the white people, and then the missionary Baptists, which is the black folks. All right, now give me... Skip over to that next order by the Missionary Baptist. So the Missionary Baptist came out of the white church. And the reason why y'all came out of there, we came out of there because I was, 
I came up in the Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, reason why we came out of there is because of slavery. You know, we felt like we was getting done wrong or whatever when, when they freed the blacks or whatever. All right, Missionary Baptist. Missionary Baptist. Missionary Baptists are a group of Baptists that grew out of the missionary slash anti-missionary controversy mm -hmm. that divided Baptists in the United States in the early part of the 19th century. Which was slavery. I skipped down right there where it says missionary Baptist as a term. Missionary Baptist is also a term used by adherents of many African-American Baptist churches. So... When they divided, the church divided, you know, the white folks was the Southern Baptists, and then the black folks was the missionary Baptists. But we we did everything that master taught us, okay? And we're going to get into some of that stuff right there. First thing that we did that master taught us was Christ was a white man. Now, give me that image. Now, this image right here was in my church in the South. Okay, this image right here. Now, this image was given to us without any biblical proof in the Bible. No biblical proof whatsoever that this was Jesus right here. But yet and still, I think about it when I was a little boy. I used to go in the church, and this is this, the image I used to see right here. And so I didn't, you know, as a young kid, you didn't think nothing of it. You just thought that was Jesus. So today, when we go out and teach on the screen, we ask a lot of the kids, who is this? And they say, that's God. That's Jesus. Without no biblical proof whatsoever. So give me, give me Revelation 114. So we never read this in the church. Never read this in the church. But yet and still, we had that image on the wall in the Baptist church. Okay, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, his head and his hairs were white like wool, read. As white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. On that image, his eyes ain't like no flame of fire, you know. All right, read. And his feet. Uh, hold on, hold on. Go back to the first part of that scripture. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, Go back. Put that image back up there, y'all. Now, we're looking at this guy's head and the hairs on his face, and they definitely ain't white and woolly. Okay, they look more yellow, browny, and stringy. Okay, but yet and still today, people still teach this image. It, it's, 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 it's ludicrous. It don't make any sense. Read on. As white as snow. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Do, 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 do his eyes look like a flame of fire on this? But yet and still, this is in the Baptist church in 2021. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now, everybody know that brass is a derivative of brown. His feet was like a, a, a brown. Okay. But not only was a, a derivative of brown, but it was read. As if they burned in a furnace. So Christ was a dark, dark man. Okay, so the image right here that they portray in the Baptist church is off. Okay, and we continue to push that image to this very day. And that's just ludicrous. We got to come up out of that thing. All right, so I know what they're saying. First thing you say, well, 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 Christ... It don't really matter how he look, brother. Once we start bringing this scripture out, Revelation 114, well, it don't really matter now how he look. Well, why put that image on there? Because you want those people to think that that's the Messiah and those are the people. Okay? Give me John. Give me John 7 and uh, 38. The book of John 7 and 38. Yeah, go ahead. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. Mm-hmm. He that believeth on me, mm -hmm. as the scripture had said. You see that? He that believeth on Christ, as the scripture has said. Because with that different Christ right there, it becomes a different doctrine. They teach you whatever they wanted to teach you. Okay, read. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you believe on Christ, as the scripture has said, out of your belly will flow living waters. Now, that's, that right there... 
That image is not as the scripture has said. Okay. Now give me, um, this is the scripture they always use in the Baptist church. Give me Matthew 28 and uh, 18 about baptism. Baptism. So they took a man's name out the Bible and made a whole religion out of it. Okay. Which ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. We're going to look at it. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. Now, I heard them read. This This might be one of the only scriptures I heard them read in the Baptist church. Read. And Jesus came and spake unto them, mm -hmm. saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Read. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what they, they used to just used to harp. I remember the pastor I came up. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now, why is he saying that? You got to know some history. Precept must be upon precept. Now, why is he saying go to all nations? Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 27. First of all, matter of fact, give me, give me Matthews 2 and 6. I think I want Matthews 2 and 6. So who who was Christ going sending sending the apostles to go talk to? Read the book of Matthew, chapter two and verse six. Mm -hmm. And thou Bethlehem, mm -hmm. in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, uh -huh. for out of thee shall come a governor mm -hmm. that shall rule my people Israel. So Christ was sending them to go to his people Israel. Now. Give me, uh, now what happened to Israel? Why were they going to be in all nations? Give me Deuteronomy 4. Matter of fact, give me Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 15. Then we're going to skip to 64. Now, what happened was the nation of Israel had a covenant with the Most High God. The covenant was, if you keep my commandments, you'll be blessed above all nations on earth. If you don't keep my commandments, I'm going to punish you. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, Read the covenant, the agreement that God had. Deuteronomy 11 and 26. Deuteronomy 11 and 26. Then we're going to go to what's going to happen to us if we didn't keep that. Deuteronomy 11 26. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Behold, I set before you this day mm -hmm. a blessing and a curse. So God is setting before the Israelites in the wilderness a blessing and a curse through the prophet Moses read a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God so in order to get the blessing you need to obey the commandments read which I command you this day uh -huh. and a curse uh -huh. if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God and a curse if you didn't obey the commandments of God okay now let's go to some of these curses go to Deuteronomy 28 and um uh, start at 16, 15 and 16. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe to do all his commandments mm -hmm. and his statutes, mm -hmm. which I command thee this day, Read. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God told him, if you don't do my commandment, these curses going to come upon you. Read. Cursed shall thou be in the city. God said, if we didn't keep his commandments, we're going to be cursed in all of the cities. Any city you go to in the south, in the worst parts of the city, who you see there? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans are on plantations. I mean, we were on plantations. Uh, the Native Americans, they put them on reservations, okay? And uh, the Hispanics are doing bad, too, okay? They work the fields to this very day in the sweet potato fields over here in uh, Vardaman. They work the fields to this very day, okay? Now skip down to uh, verse uh, 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people uh -huh. from the one end of the earth uh -huh. even unto the other. So one of the consequences of not keeping the commandments was we're going to be scattered to the four corners of the earth. Okay, amongst all people. The Israelites are going to be scattered amongst all people. That's why Christ said, go ye therefore into all nations. Going, cause you, But you're going to those nations to teach the Israelites. You're not going to teach everybody. Read on. 
and there thou shalt serve other gods. And in these nations, we were prophesied to serve other gods. Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Now, our forefathers never knew a, a, a white Jesus, okay? They never knew a Jesus that loved everybody, okay? That's another religion right there. They wish we should serve faith gods, read. Even wood and stone. And that goes into the wood, which is the Christianity, and the stone, which is the cobblestone, which is uh, the Muslim religion, okay? Now, go back to... Uh, Matthew 28, and uh, so go ye therefore, read again, uh, 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, mm -hmm. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Right. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, mm -hmm baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So and I've seen in the Baptist church that when they dip in the people in the water, they say in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Okay, now let's let's get a little bit into baptism. I remember it was a robbery in the little town I was from with the, I think it was the Pentecostal church or the apostolic faith. In the Baptist church. One of them say you're supposed to baptize in the name of Jesus. And then the other say you're supposed to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Neither one of them know what they're talking about. It was a, it was a cluster of garbage. <laughs> okay, so now, now baptism. Now, who, who was John the Baptist baptizing, first of all? Give me, I want to go to uh, Acts 13. I want to go to Acts 13 and uh, start at 23. Let me get it. Acts 13 and 23. Was John the Baptist baptizing everybody? Who was he baptizing? Acts 13 and 23. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Of this man's seed. Have God according to his promise mm -hmm. raised unto Israel a savior. Raised unto who a savior? Israel. Uh huh. A savior, mm -hmm. Jesus. So the savior is Israel, and the name of the savior is Jesus. So Jesus came to save Israel. It's just that simple. Okay, read. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism mm -hmm. of repentance to all the people of Israel. So John was baptizing the people of Israel to repentance, to repentance. Today, in the Baptist church, they don't tell you to repent. They do not tell you to repent. They just put you on some called a mourner's bench, which I don't even know what that is. Get, matter of fact, give me that article on the mourner's bench. Because I know when I came up, you got on the mourner's bench for a week or a month or whatever, and 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 then they have a date scheduled for your baptism, whatever. But we never knew what the hell the mourner's bench was. They just had us setting up there with they put you some white sheets on, you know. Hell, I, I ain't know what it was. I was talking to a couple of brothers like, what 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 did that mean? They didn't tell us nothing. You just on the morning bench, you know. We don't know what that means. Okay. All right, what, what is the mourner's bench? Read that. Mourner's bench. Mm -hmm. The mourner's bench, also known as the mercy seat mm -hmm. or anxious bench, mm -hmm. in Methodist and other evangelical Christian churches, mm -hmm. is a bench located in front of the chancel. Now, where, where do they get this stuff from? Ain't no mourner's bench in the, in the, in the scriptures. Now it's a mercy seat in the scriptures, but that deal with the with the uh, Levitical priesthood. So I have no idea. It's just a ball of confusion in the Baptist church. It's a ball of confusion. Okay, read on. The practice was instituted by John Wesley, another white man, the founder of the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Individual kneels at the mourner's bench to experience the new birth, and some of those who have already had the new birth. Go there to receive entire sanctification, mm -hmm. while others, especially backsliders, mm -hmm. 
use the mourner's bench to confess their sins and receive forgiveness. Now, in the Baptist church, they ain't telling us about no com confess no sins. We didn't even know what sin was right. in the in the in the in the Baptist church. I was there. Nobody told me to confess no sins. I ain't know what no sin was. Matter of fact, give me that. Give me sin. They never taught us to confess no sins in no more on no morning mourners bench. You know, it was just a ball of confusion. They don't teach you nothing, and you just stay. You just stay in confusion. Read the book of First John, chapter three, verse four. So this is sin. Read whosoever committed sin mm -hmm. transgressed also the law. So who commits sin? You break God laws. Okay, read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of God law. So sin is the breaking of God law. So if you're gonna confess your sin, you gotta know what God laws are. If you if you're a fornicator, you need you need to you need to say, well, look, I'm gonna stop fornicating, okay? Because that's sin right there. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right, now, go back. Go back. Uh, that's all I wanted on that article. So go. So he said in Matthew 28, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So how? So we we read in Acts thirteen that that was wrong because Israel was only baptizing. John the Baptist was only baptizing Israel. So we know that he was only going to the nation of Israel. All right. So who was Christ going to? The, the same people, the nation of Israel. Now give me Matthew three. Matthew 3 and um, start at verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. In those days came John the Baptist, mm -hmm. preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Where Israel was, read. And saying, uh -huh. repent ye, uh -huh. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see what he was saying? Repent. Repent. Stop breaking God's law. Repent means to change. Stop breaking God's laws. Read. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, mm -hmm. make his path straight. So John came to prepare the way of the Lord. So he came to get Israel to repentance to make way for Christ's true baptism. Okay, read. And the same John had his remnant of camel's hair, and a leather girdle about his loins, mm -hmm. and his meat was locust and wild honey. Read. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea mm -hmm. and all the region round about Jordan, mm -hmm. and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. You see, they were after he was baptized, and they was confessing their sins, but it was only to the nation of Israel. They were confessing their sins, confessing their sin. They never. Taught no, they never to this day teach nobody in the Baptist church to confess no sins, okay? And they don't tell them they Israel, okay? Because this right here was only for the nation of Israel. It had nothing to do with no Philistines, uh, or none of the other, other nations you read about in the scriptures. It was only the nation of Israel. Today, the Baptist church ought to say this is for Israel only. That's what they should say. But no, they say God love everybody. When you do that, that's another gospel. That's another Jesus. That Jesus ain't in the Bible. Okay, read on. Verse 7. Uh -huh. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees 
came to his baptism, mm -hmm. he said unto them, Read. O generation of vipers, mm -hmm. who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, Read. bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. So he was telling them to repent. They need to repent. You old generation of vipers, I need you to repent. Now skip down to verse 10. Verse 10. Uh-huh. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Read. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit mm -hmm. is honed down mm -hmm. and cast into the fire. So the tree right there represents man. Okay, if you're not going to bring forth good fruit, meaning uh, repentance and keeping God's laws, that you're going to be hemmed down, cut down, and, and put in the fire, the lake of fire. Read. Verse I 11. indeed. I indeed baptize you with water. So John indeed baptized with water. Read. Unto repentance. Unto what? Repentance. Unto repentance. It was always to get Israel to repent, come back to keeping God's laws. Read. But he that cometh after me mm -hmm. is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Read. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and with fire. So he's saying, look, I'm, yeah, I'm baptizing you with water, but he that after me is going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He was not going to baptize you with water. Okay, skip over to uh, uh, John 3 and 30. Read. John 3 and 30. So John's baptism was to get Israel. He made a way. Uh, turn the people back. So when Christ come, now Christ's ministry is going to take over. His ministry was ending then, okay? And Christ's ministry took over where he was going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Okay, read. John chapter 3, verse 30. Mm -hmm. He must increase, mm -hmm. but I must decrease. You see that? John was saying he was going to decrease his ministry of water baptism and Christ was going to increase with uh, baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Okay. Now give me uh, mm, mm, mm. go back to Acts 13. Go back to Acts 13 and let me look at it. Acts 13 because we left something out right there. Acts 13. And I want to uh, read verse uh, 24 again. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 24. Read. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. To all the people of Israel, read. And as John fulfilled his course. See that? John fulfilled his course. So the, the course of water baptism was being fulfilled. Okay, read. Whom think ye that I am? Mm -hmm. I am not he. Read. But behold, there cometh one after me, mm -hmm. whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. You hear that? So John's course was being fulfilled. Now Christ is taking over, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Because Christ didn't dip in water. Give me that scripture. I think it's in, uh, is it, uh, no, 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 the one, John 4, John 4, John 4, because Christ did not dip in water. Yes. yes. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, mm -hmm. though, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So Jesus never dipped anybody in water, okay? But his disciples did because John's baptism was so powerful that we continued to do it, but it was it was always symbolic. The water was always symbolic of washing away that old man. We it, That wasn't the first time that you heard about water in the Bible, okay? Water was always... Symbolic of washing the old man, washing away the old man, and we're issuing in the new man. But the water was always symbolic of God's laws. The water itself didn't do anything. The water was symbolic of God's laws. Give, give me that in uh, Isaiah 1 and 16. So today, we don't dip nobody in water, 
Okay, what we do is teach, we baptize them with the Holy Ghost, meaning we teach them God's laws, okay? The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Wash you, mm -hmm. make you clean. Me? Put away the evil of your doings. You hear that? So to wash you and make you clean, you got to put away the evil of your doing. If you're a homosexual, you got to stop being a homosexual because that's against God's laws. That's against God's sexual uh, sexual laws in Leviticus 18. Okay, if you uh, if you a whoremonger, you got to stop being a whoremonger. If you eat unclean food, you got to stop eating unclean food. You got to repent from that. Give me Jeremiah 2 and 22. Jeremiah 2 and uh, 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. For though thou wash thee with nectary mm -hmm. and take thee much soap, Read. Yet thy iniquity is marked before me, mm -hmm. said the Lord God. You see that? So water don't cleanse your mind. Being dipped in water, you can you can be washed all day. But when you come out, you still a sinner if you don't repent and start to keep God's law. So the water itself don't do nothing to you. If you be dipped as a fornicator, if you don't know God's laws, you come out, you still, you just a wet fornicator. Okay, it don't do nothing for you. You got to repent and keep the laws of God. Okay, now give me uh, Acts uh, Acts nineteen, Acts nineteen. So John's baptism and Christ's baptism was different. John Pap John was baptizing Israel to repentance, but Christ was going to come in and baptize them with the Holy Ghost. Okay, read. Uh, nineteen started one. Acts nineteen. The book of Acts chapter nineteen. Verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Read. He said unto them, mm -hmm. have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be in ho any Holy Ghost. Read. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. unto what then were ye baptized? What you was baptized in, read. And they said, unto John's baptism. Unto John's baptism, okay? John had dipped them in water to repentance. So they knew that they was Israel, and they knew that they had to stop breaking God's laws. Okay, read. Then said Paul, mm -hmm. John verily baptized you with the baptism of repentance, mm -hmm. saying unto the people mm -hmm. that they should believe on him which should come after him. Because John came to make a way for Christ. Okay, he came to, he said, believe on him that should come after him, because there's one going to come after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to feel, read. That is on Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. When they heard this, mm -hmm. they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You hear that? They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, just, just, just to prove that baptizing don't all means mean dip in water, go to... Uh, is it 2 Corinthians 10 when Moses baptized him? Yes, sir. On 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And uh, is it verse 1? Let's see. It might be 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant mm -hmm. how that all of our fathers were under the cloud mm -hmm. and all passed through the sea. Now, who are the forefathers that passed through the Red Sea? Where was that at? That was in, that was in the wilderness, okay? That was us, our forefathers coming out of Egypt, okay, when we went through the Red Sea. Okay, read. And we're all baptized unto Moses uh -huh. in the cloud and in the sea. Now, was, was Moses dipping folks in water? No, Moses taught Israel the laws of God. That's right. That's the true baptism to teach Israel the laws of God, the Holy Ghost. Give me John 14 and 15. John 14, 15. So, if you're in the Baptist church, come up out of that thing because you're not... Being dipped in water is not going to save you. I know in the Baptist church they say you have to be dipped in this water and it's going to save you. 
what's going to save you is repent with the faith in Jesus Christ. Repent. Stop breaking God law. Stop being an idolater. Stop keeping Thanksgiving, Christmas. All that stuff is idolatry. Stop being a whoremonger. Stop being a fornicator. Okay, read. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. Mm -hmm. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, this is Christ right here. If you love me, keep my commandments. Read. And I will pray the Father, mm -hmm. and he shall give you another comforter. Read. That he may abide with you forever. Read. Even the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit right there, the spirit of truth. But what you got to be doing at first, skip up the back 15 again. If ye love me, uh -huh. keep my commandments. So the, the prerequisite for you getting the spirit of truth, you have to be keeping the, com the commandments of God. Now That's skip right. down back. And I will uh, pray the Father. And I will pray the Father, mm -hmm. and he shall give you another comforter. Read. That he may abide with you forever. Read. Even the spirit of truth, mm -hmm. whom the world cannot receive, mm -hmm. because it seeth him not. You hear that? The spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get that if you're not keeping the commandments. So if you're in the uh, Pentecostal church, shucking and jiving and falling all down, saying you got the Holy Ghost, you don't have no Holy Ghost because you're not keeping the commandments. The Pentecostal church or the Baptist church do not keep that we must keep the commandments of God. Okay? Verse, uh, skip down to verse uh, verse 21. Uh, same chapter. Yes, sir. John 14 and 21. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 21. Mm -hmm. He that had my commandments. This is Christ speaking. He that have my commandments, read. And keepeth them. And keepeth them, meaning you got to do the commandments of God, read. He it is that loveth me. He that is that loveth me, read. And he that loveth me uh -huh. shall be loved of my father. Uh -huh. And I will love him mm -hmm. and will manifest myself to him. Now you got the Holy Ghost. You keeping That's the right. commandments. You keeping the commandments. Christ will come and dwell in you. And you you, you know you Israel because, uh, because you see what God did to us for breaking his laws. In the book of Deuteronomy 28, we went into slavery for breaking God's laws. So the reason why our people came up in the Baptist church is because their master was a Baptist. Always come through slavery. Master was a Baptist, so guess what we come out to be? We come to be Baptist. So we need to come up out of those Baptist churches because that's idolatry. It is no God of everybody. The God of the Bible is only for the nation of Israel. Give me that in Joel 2.27. Joel 2.27. Book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God said, the God of the Bible said, you should know I'm in the midst of Israel. I'm not in the midst of all nations. I'm in the midst of Israel, read. And that I am the Lord your God. And I'm your God, read. And none else. He's Israel's God and none else. And Christ only died for the nation of Israel. Okay, and the only the people was getting baptized in the Bible was the nation of Israel, and the water was all symbolic uh, of the Word of God cleansing you. Give me Ephesians, Ephesians five and twenty six, and and what we've learned in these these Christian churches has just been mad confusion. It's just a ball of confusion. Okay, the book of Ephesians chapter five verse twenty six. Mm -hmm. That he might sanctify and cleanse it mm -hmm. with the washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word. That's what cleanses you. God laws. Keeping God laws cleanses you. Okay. Uh, give me that in uh, John. Is it 15? Yeah, 15 and 3. John 15 and 3. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Mm-hmm. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You hear that? That's how you get clean, through the words, God's word that are spoken to you. You, you hear the word, you repent, you start to keep the commandments, then you become clean, okay? Give me uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's how you become clean. 
Yeah, I think it's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. You're a new creature. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. When you repent and start keeping the commandments with the faith in Christ, you become a new creature. Read. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Read. Behold, all things are become new. Now, all things become new. Now, I want to show you uh, in the book of 2 Israel's. Uh, chapter 16, I think, uh, and verse, um, 67. The book of second address, chapter 16, verse 67. Mm -hmm. Behold, God himself is the judge. Mm -hmm. Fear him. Mm -hmm. Leave off from your sins. Leave off from your sins. Leave off from your sins. Read. And forget your iniquity. Uh -huh. To meddle no more with them forever. Read. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. That's what you want to be in these Christian churches. You want to be delivered from all trouble. Well, guess what you got to do? You got to leave off from your sins because the Christian church uh, in the Baptist church, all the same thing. Don't teach you to stop breaking God's laws. And that's what our people need to do. You want to be cleansed, stop breaking God's laws. Give me uh, Psalms 119 and verse 9. Psalms 119 and verse 9. Psalms 119 and verse 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Mm -hmm. By taking heed thereunto according to the, thy word. You hear that? So how you cleanse your ways? By taking heed to the word of God. God say stop, uh, stop being a fornicator, you stop being a fornicator. God say stop getting drunk, you stop getting drunk. Okay. All right. Uh, give me, uh, give me uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 3. And verse 21. So baptism, baptism does save us. Listen to the scripture. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Uh -huh. The like figure where unto even baptism doth always now save us. So baptism does save us. Read. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not the putting away of filth of the flesh. What puts away the filth of your flesh? The water. Not the water. Read. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. What gives you a good conscience toward God? His laws. Because God wants you to keep his laws. Okay? You cannot get the kingdom of heaven uh, in these Baptist churches thinking that God loves everybody. God wants you to keep his laws. Water baptism, that don't cleanse you. Okay? It's the washing of the water by the word. Keeping the commandments of God was cleanse you. And uh, with that, uh, I hope y'all got something out of the class. Um, water baptism does not save you. It's the answer to a good conscience toward God will save you. So uh, our people need to come out of these Christian churches, repent, and start to keep the commandments of God. And with that, we're going to say shalom.